What do we do every day for energy and nutrition? And where does this food come from? And how about the fiber that keeps us warm? And the flowers that bring so much joy to our lives and provide food for the bees? And how about the soaps and lotions that keep us clean? They all come from the farm. Long before the town of Killingly was officially established in 1708, Native Americans cultivated the soil. As early American settlers inhabited the area, farms were established in order to feed not only the family, but also the growing population. Textile mills, small industries, and sawmills eventually became more dominant. They took advantage of abundant water power from rivers and streams. Nevertheless, farming still maintained a presence all over town. Farmers raised fruit, vegetables, meat, milk, and eggs in their orchards, gardens, and pastures, as well as sheep for wool production. Several farms still exist today to continue the tradition that began hundreds of years ago. These and other farms are nestled in the hilltops, neighborhoods, and forests of Killingly. They produce a diversity of farm products. Diversity is the key word for Killingly agriculture. When people think of farming, they tend to think first of spring. But for many farms, it all really begins in the cold of winter. Seeds need to be ordered and planted. Trees and vines are pruned. Greenhouse crops are cared for. And of course, animals need to be fed no matter what the weather. My father was born in 1892, and um, he came here in, in 1920.
25 or 26. And I think there was about 65 acres. And he grew, uh, bought other land and made that into about 130. And as the warm weather approaches, trees are tapped for sweet maple syrup. The very busy and fervent activity of spring soon begins. Buds bursting, flowers blooming, and vegetative growth increases with the longer days and extra warmth. Soil is prepared for planting and the growing season begins. Blueberry Hill Organic Farm was started in 2011 when my husband and I bought a 12-acre piece of property in South Killingly with the dream of building a super energy efficient home and developing a farm. The farm became a reality in 2012 with the clearing and planting of the first field. We received USDA organic certification that year as the land had not been farmed in over 200 years and full mature hardwood trees needed to be cleared in order for the land to be usable for crops again. The farm currently produces over 150 varieties of berries, melons, greens, herbs, and vegetables. Christmas trees are planted at this time too. We started growing trees about 15 years ago, really as a community business. Uh, we don't advertise sales, but it's fun to see uh, the same customers each year, children growing up. The Killingly Agriculture Commission sponsors classes to educate the public. You know, we're looking for angles that would say would be like your thumb. You know, these would be natural angles that you would want to keep and encourage. Um, so basically, we're getting anything that was uh, that was crossed over. These these are pruned lightly. Here, um, we've got the, these are some trees that are probably 60 years old. Um, you, you can see how much we've pruned here, uh, trying to just get them open. 
get the clean out the insides. You can see we, we, we make some big cuts, all this firewood came out of these trees. When's Got the enough. time of year to prune? You can, we start the first of the year and then we, uh, we go right into April. So, you know, if you haven't pruned, you know, it's, it's a good time to do it still. I'm pretty happy with the way they're opened up now. You can see that there were big cuts made. Yeah, so I you, let you the know. air and the sunshine into the tree. Do you it, do any fertilizer to these at all? The, the soils have been really good up here. You know, we, um, I mean, I get a ton of apples, but they ain't big. They're all you That's because mm -hmm. you got too many on the tree. Yeah. It, the tree's going to produce what it's going to produce. So, right. say this tree's going to produce 300 pounds. It doesn't care if you if it has a thousand that are a half an inch or an inch I wide, see. or five, 50 of them that are two inches. Yeah. So these here, I wish they had never uh, been allowed to uh, to get tall like this. Uh, what we're going to try to do is get the height out of these. There. A lot of this little stuff should get cleaned off on the inside. These plants are more than a hundred years old, you know, so all the old branches, I just cut them right off as like, close to the bottom as I could. So you're encouraging the new growth because the blueberries have the best fruit on, like this is a one-year-old branch. They have their best fruit on two-year-old branches. Dark red ones are Rhode Island reds. I have the white leghorns because I like having a few white eggs in each dozen. It makes it look good at the farmer's market. And then Rhode Island Reds are just good Rhode Island Reds. They lay a lot of eggs. You just take a, um, it's called a, a 90 degree street elbow. And this is online. You know, if, if you want, I can, um, try to share a YouTube link to it on your emails. But you put the grain in here and it's waterproof and they can't scratch it out most importantly and waste it because this is expensive grain. We feed non-GMO grain that we buy from Pennsylvania and you you don't want them wasting it. I mean, you can see there's some waste still on the ground from, from uh, them, but those buckets are the same thing. And I fill those buckets once a day. So that's, they're eating about 50 pounds of grain a day. Are, all right, so the feeder was about three bucks. These things are about five bucks on Amazon. They're called chicken nipples, and they just come up and peck them, and they get water. And, and of course, lots and lots of babies are born. Following birthing, mothers produce milk, which can be used not only for food, but also for farm products like soap.
I'll just kind of drizzle it in there because I tend to add too much. I like honey. The honey is good and it attracts moisture to your skin. So we like to use it. The silicone mold, we just um, we just pour the, the soap. Horses and riders like the springtime too. When summer arrives, the longer days, warm temperatures, and abundant sunshine make everything grow. For example, hay is cut and baled to feed the animals. I think the uh, turn has come uh, for range chickens, eggs, and uh, to try to keep away from as many antibiotics as possible, so which all leads to a, not such a large conglomerate of a type of farm versus the smaller ones. And I'm glad to see so many people getting into backyard chickens and raising their own vegetables. Logie's Greenhouses were started in 1892 by William D. Logie, my grandfather. And at that time, Danielson was a very much of a rural town, and he began the business here on Lost Street, which was really the countryside of Danielson, in a small greenhouse that um, had been let go by a cobbler named John Maws. And my grandfather had trained as a rose grower, and he came to Danielson to start a floral business, particularly growing cut flowers and making um, floral arrangements, being the local florist. The reason to support local ag is so that, so that agriculture can expand and become um, not only profitable but viable as a, um, as a way to make a living and also as an economic resource. And killingly, local agriculture is generally smaller ag. Um, it's not the big industrial ag that um, we know of in the West and in other areas of the country. And so these smaller growers, actually, the consumer can actually get to know them at the farmer's markets or coming to their um, stands where they sell. They also tend to be um, more environmentally sound um, in terms of the um, use of pesticides and synthetics only because they're directly exposed to it and they also may have that consciousness. The other thing is, is that when we buy local, we are um, in a great degree reducing the transportation effect, but not only the cost, but also the environmental effect of um, transportation on our food system. And we, in a long-term plan, are able to um, create a sustainable system for our food by supporting local ag. family has a 
sheep farm now, raising up to 35 head. These are used for meat, pets, and wool. Wool going into a blanket project sponsored by the Connecticut Sheep Breeders Association. The farm was first purchased in 1818 by my great-great-great-grandfather. It's been in the family since then. The farm is important to us. Uh, there's a significant interaction with the local community. Mothers show up with their toddlers in the spring to see the newborn lambs. Uh, we post a sign with lamb births during the spring. People pay a lot of attention to that sign. People have wagers on whether there will be any more lambs this morning when they come. And uh, children love it. If there's a bottle to be fed, they'll want to know what time of day it happens so they can be here to do it. Sheep are sheared once a year, uh, typically in late May when wool was delivered uh, for the blanket project. After shearing, the wool is skirted to remove any vegetation that's in it, dirty parts. Uh, approximately two-thirds of the fleece can be used for weaving and or blanket purposes. Vegetables and cut flowers grow rapidly in the summer months, giving farmers the opportunity to sell cash crops at farm stands and farmers markets. Plants and flowers are abundant and growing quickly, both indoors and out. This is our chance to enjoy the colors, fragrance, and bounty of summertime. All the flowering plants being produced on the farms and greenhouses, bees are busy making honey, and the farmer is busy taking care of the bees. harvest comes, especially with perishable fruit and vegetables, it is time for the farmer to offer their product to the public. In Killingly, one opportunity is at the farmer's market, in operation every summer since 1980. Some 
vegetables you buy from your local farmer are the freshest and tastiest available. Fruits are allowed to ripen fully in the field and picked just for you. The more we support local farmers who grow food in healthy ways, the more they and their beautiful farmland will flourish. Buying at local markets puts money directly into the pockets of local farmers and craftspeople rather than large industry. A sure sign of fall is people picking apples in an orchard. Truly a family and child friendly experience. Fall vegetables and fruit grow sweet as the temperatures cool and the colors become more vibrant. The farmer's abundance Agricultural festivals and the final farmers markets will end the season in the glory of the harvest.
And when winter eventually comes, it is comforting to know that the cycle of the seasons will be renewed. With the hay stacked in the barn and the apples in cold storage, the seed catalogs will arrive in the mail and the planning for the next year will begin. <laughs>